be talking to one of the participants in that welterweight tournament, Brett Cooper, joining us here on the MMA Fanatics. Brett, you there, man? Yep, I'm here. How you doing? Good, man. How's it going? Thanks for joining us. Uh, no problem. It's going good. Just got done with practice, so it's resting. Good to hear. So, how's uh, how's training been going for uh, for Steve Carl? Of course, the fight's next Thursday, so you're probably winding down your camp. But how's uh, the entire training camp been? Training's been going good. You know, I always train hard, so I'm always ready. But uh, today was my last, you know, really hard day, mm-hmm. and now I'm be winding down. You know, so I can make weight and stuff uh, for next Wednesday. All right, so, you know, a lot of hardcore fans know who you are from your IFL and Affliction fights, but, you know, some of the more mm-hmm. casual fans, the, the people that have been hiding under a rock, I'm sure, may not have, <laughs> may not have seen you fight. So, you know, let's, uh, let's talk about how did you get your start in mixed martial arts? Where did Brett Cooper uh, emerge into the mixed martial arts world from? Well, I would say it's similar to a lot of the other guys. You know, everybody, you know, everybody watched the – the Kung Fu movies and stuff like that, but I, I really had like a, I had a motivation to to compete, you know, and I always like watching fighting and martial arts, so uh, it just seemed like a good way to, uh, you know, solve that problem of uh, wanting to compete, you know, and I don't know, I just I just really like fighting, so. Gotcha. So. You know, I've heard you actually come from a, from a hockey background. Did that have any influence, you know, you getting onto scraps on the ice? Did you, you know, want to make the transition yeah, from ice I, to the cage? I, I got into a few fights. You're not really allowed to fight until, like, uh, until you get, like, 18 years old. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I did get in a few fights, and, like, I, I pretty much stopped playing hockey when, when you could actually fight, you know. Well, I, I stopped playing, like, 17 years old. And, um, yeah, I just, I was kind of disinterested. I, I was kind of over hockey. I played it for, like, 10 years since I was, like, 7 to, like, 17. So, but I, I always really liked fighting, and my, my parents didn't, at first, they didn't really like it very much. So as soon as I got my uh, my first car and my license, I, uh, I started training with uh, Tracy S. ever since then. So that's how I got started. But, uh, yeah, everybody always talks about me playing hockey and stuff. It's kind of funny, but, yeah, I, I did play hockey. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's understandable. And some, some fighters, they, you know, media will just latch on to one aspect of their, you know, career before fighting. Yeah, you know, we had, we had, exactly. We had Sarah Kaufman on the show, and everyone likes to bring up the fact that she was a former dancer. I guess that's really interesting that she went from, you know, dancing to kicking people in the face. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess they just try to they try to link it to like other you know big sports, and uh, I guess it you know it helps the helps them from their media aspect gives them something to talk about. Yeah, for sure. So um, you know you train with the the body shop over there with uh, Antonio McKee and and Jason yeah. High and Emmanuel Newton. You know I think it's it's slowly becoming kind of one of the one of the better camps out there, and you know it doesn't it's not viewed in the same light as like a Greg Jackson submission fighting or an American yeah. top team, but it's it's a really yeah. great camp. So how, how has your experience been training with those guys? It's been great, man. You know, we all train really hard. We all get along. You know, uh, occasionally you have, you know, everybody gets on each other's nerves, but yeah, for the most part, you know, it's really, really good. Um, the energy is real good in the camp. We all improve together, um, you know, from where we – I would say, like, uh, probably two and a half, three years ago is when, like, everybody started training, like, real hard together. And from that point, like, everybody's improved. Uh, Jason's in the UFC, even though he's lost, you know. Uh, he, you know, he's in the top show, you know, UFC. And then uh, right. Jesse Warris should be in UFC pretty soon, uh, another training partner in my weight. Emmanuel Newton, uh, he was doing real good, you know, had had some, some, chub, some uh, rough times lately. And uh, of course, Coach Antonio. You know, he just—he's uh, uh, kind of one of those. He's probably the best fighter not in UFC, I'd say, or in, in a top show. Um, you know, that hasn't signed with anybody, but that can be—you uh, know—people say that's due to his, you know, style of fighting. But he's 40 years old, so I don't know if he's going to go in there and start banging. But yeah. but uh, you never know. He's he's really good uh, on the ground, and he actually has good stand up. But he just—it's a uh, well, why take the risk when you can just win, you know, on the uh, on the ground? There's no point. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, a lot of people, 
when they talk about Antonio McKee, they talk about, you know, great fighter. He's, he's racked up a lot of wins over, you know, good competition throughout his career. He's had a, you know, a good career. He's got a nice record. Um, but a lot of people say that, you know, he makes maybe a better trainer than a fighter, you know, training guys like yourself and, and Jason High, of course, and Emmanuel Newton. You mentioned Jesse Juarez, who I believe has a fight coming up this weekend. Um, yeah. A lot of people are, are interested in his prospects. So, you know, mm-hmm. how would you respond to that? Do you think, you know, coming from a guy that he he has trained, what would you respond to the people that said maybe he, you know, his future is more in, in training than fighting? I would say he's good at both. And, and, and for me, um, I think it's important – as a coach, to have fighting experience. Right. So, like, uh, we have all these guys, you know, they have coaches, they have coaches, and, you know, some of the very popular coaches, but these coaches really don't have a background in, say, MMA or, you know, they might have a boxing background or, you know, wrestling background or whatever like that, but they don't have, like, an MMA background. And Antonio has, you know, over 50 fights in MMA, and so that really helps, uh, you know, from a coaching aspect. And I I don't know if he I don't want to say he's a better coach or a better fighter. I just think he's good at both. But um yeah, um I don't know, man. That's that's a tough question, but yeah, he he's real good at both. I don't know, it's up to him. He he's, he's getting up there in years, you know, so he's uh, you know, I think he's going to do his little last hurrah and see what happens and then uh and then probably hang it up. I don't know. It's hard though cuz a lot of a lot of fighters, you know, or comp- even competitors there's nothing, you know, not even just fighting, just any athlete, you know, they they really don't give it up until they can't hack it no more, you know, a lot of them. But uh, I don't know, then, then there's some guys that are smart, and like uh, Joe Calzaghe, you know, he retires with his right. his legacy intact, you know, he doesn't go out like uh, uh, like some guys, like, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, Roy Jones or something like that. Uh, you know, he, he at one point in time, like, nobody could touch him. You know, but now he's, I don't know if he didn't do the right thing with his money or whatever, but, you know, there's a lot of examples like that, but he, uh, uh, at, at this point in time, you know, he just, he probably should have retired by now, you know, and be a coach. Yeah, I think uh, anyone that saw that Bernard Hopkins fight would probably agree with you. Um, but, uh, you know, I think yeah. it's an interesting point that you bring up that, you know, um, McKee's a great fighter and, and a and a trainer, and most of the top trainers aren't really great fighters or have never even fought before. And I I definitely agree with that. And, you know, you see guys like Mark Lehman, guys like Greg Jackson, um, these guys that a lot of people say are, you know, some of the best trainers, but they don't have that MMA experience. Experience, exactly. Do you you, you think you benefit from having a guy like that? And and how so do you benefit? Definitely, because for me... To have a confidence in somebody that's telling me what to do, I have to know that they they know that from experience. Because, you know, you have a lot of guys in corners, you know, they'll just be yelling stuff out, blah, 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 blah. And because, you know, they just they yell it out because somebody else is yelling it out. But when you're in a corner, you have to yell out specific instructions, you know, that that you know. And and especially from a fighter, when you're inside there, like from that mindset, you know what I mean? Because you could just yell out all kinds of stuff and he's not going to hear anything. You know, you got to yell specific instructions. And you have to know from each individual, you know, how they react and, you know, how, how uh, you have to talk to everybody differently. So I would say that's that's really important. And I don't know, Greg Jackson seems like a really good coach. He seems really like an open-minded, intelligent guy. Mark Lehman, I don't know, I've never met the guy, but he seems kind of like, I don't know, he just needs to shut up sometimes. But <laughs> but he seems like he knows what he's doing jiu-jitsu wise for sure. But uh, I don't know, like. Uh, there's that, I guess, on that one Ultimate Fighter, there's that one instance where him and Matt Sarah got into it. Right. And Matt Sarah was like, you know, he's an expert swimmer, but he's never been in the pool. You know, mm-hmm. it's kind of it's kind of like that. You know, so you can you can be a critic and never do MMA, but you know, it's never going to be the same. You know, I I believe to be a coach, you have to have experience. You know. 